Colombia and Venezuela, or the Republic of Colombia and the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, two bordering North South American countries. Wait, that sounded weird. Two bordering countries and the northern part of South America. Actually, technically, both have a bunch of islands off the coast of South America, but you know what I mean. Venezuela and Colombia have a lot in common. Heck, they even have similar flags. Both have lots of natural beauty and lots of natural resources. Both have lots of ports and are well connected to the rest of the world. While both border the Caribbean Sea and Atlantic Ocean, Colombia also borders the Pacific Ocean, being the only country on the continent that borders two different oceans. Both are two of the most ethnically diverse countries in the world. Heck, it's not just humans, they are also mega diverse countries, meaning they have lots of biodiversity. Lots of uh, variety of life, if you know what I'm saying. Most residents of both countries can trace their ancestry to three continents. Europe, Africa, and South America, of course. At least a quarter of all Venezuelans and at least half of Colombians identify as mestizo, or a person of mixed European and indigenous ancestry. Both border Brazil. Venezuela also borders Guyana. Colombia also borders Panama, Ecuador, and Peru. Both have lots of mountains and beautiful beaches. Colombia has the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, the highest coastal range in the tropics and one of the highest coastal ranges in the world. It's the source of 36 different rivers. However, it's the epic Andes Mountains that is the main range that runs through both. The Andes these are the longest mountain range on Earth, starting in Venezuela and ending all the way down on the southern tip of the continent. While both countries are located in the tropics, the climate changes in both due to those mountains. Much of both is straight up rainforest, but in the mountains they have a subtropical highland, oceanic, and even tundra climate. Otherwise, much of both is covered in savanna. These areas and the coasts even have arid and desert climates. Both have to worry about earthquakes, but Colombians also have to worry about volcanoes. While most of South America usually doesn't have to worry about hurricanes, both Colombia and Venezuela can sometimes get them. Both countries have, like, lots of rivers. Colombia has the magnificent Magdalena River. 66% of the country lives in the Magdalena's drainage basin. Venezuela's main extraordinary river is the Orinoco, the fourth largest river in the world by discharge volume of water. Impressive! It forms part of the border between the two countries. The largest city in both countries is also the capital of both. That said, Bogota, the biggest city and capital of Colombia, is much bigger than Caracas, the biggest city and capital of Venezuela. And while Bogota is high... In the mountains, that is. Caracas is right by the sea. Bogota is the only metro with more than 10 million people, more than 7,500 feet above sea level. Heck, it's nearly 8,600 feet above sea level. They're really high. Just saying. The minimum drinking age in both countries is 18. Both have more violent crime than most of the rest of the world. Both produce a lot of my favorite drink ever. Ever. Coffee. That said, Colombia is currently the world's third biggest coffee producer, behind only Vietnam and Brazil. Although residents of both speak dozens of different languages, the official language of both is Spanish. Hey, speaking of which, me llamo Señor Beat. Eh? Eh? Espanol? Necesito practicar. Uh, I've been trying to learn Spanish so I can visit countries like Colombia and Venezuela and not sound like an idiot, like I just did. And to help with that, I've been using an app called Babbel. And it just so happens that this video is sponsored in part by Babbel. <laughs> Muy bueno. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world. I've been using it for a couple of years now to learn Spanish. Hola. Soy la madre de Alejandro. Mucho gusto. 
I'm getting pretty good. I'm learning my stuff. I'm still kind of mediocre. Más o menos. I'm way better than I used to be, though, thanks to Babel. Solo necesito aprender lo suficiente uh, para mezclarse con. Vale? And Babel offers a 20-day money-back guarantee. Hey, you can easily learn a new language with Babel, too. Get 60% off a new subscription with Babel's Cyber Monday sale. Thanks to Babel for sponsoring this video. Anyway, the biggest religion in both countries is Christianity. Specifically, most identify as Roman Catholic. Both used to be part of the same country. Oh yeah, let's get into some history now, eh? And that might also help explain why most folks in both are Roman Catholic and speak Spanish. Humans have lived in the area of modern day Colombia and Venezuela as long as 15,000 to 20,000 years ago. There's evidence that modern day Colombia had humans there first, though at some point around 12,000 years ago, hunter-gatherer tribes began to transition to farming. By the early 100s, distinct nations had formed. The Moisaca, Zenu, Kiambaya, and and Tyrona lived in modern-day Colombia. The Kalina, Caquieto, Marique, and Timoto Cuicas lived in modern-day Venezuela. At the time of European arrival, millions of these indigenous people were living there. The first Spanish explorers to reach the area were led by Christopher Columbus. In 1499, Alonso de Ojeda set foot on the Guajira Peninsula. Other Spanish explorers, led by Rodrigo de Bastilla, checked out more of the coast the following year. In 1510, Vasco Nunez de Balboa founded the town of Santa Maria la Antigua del Darien in present-day Colombia, right about here. More Spanish conquistadors came and founded other settlements nearby. Some conquistadors were more friendly with the local indigenous tribes, others not at all. Separate from that, though, was the fact that most indigenous peoples died off due to not having immunity to smallpox and other other diseases the Spanish brought over with them. Oh, wasn't that nice of them. The Spanish controlled most of the Caribbean coast by the 1530s. That decade, the Spanish let multiple German conquistadors come to the area to search for El Dorado, or the City of Gold. According to legend, the place was literally made of gold and thus really freaking rich. Well, they never found El Dorado because, well, it never existed in the first place. Meanwhile, some of modern-day Venezuela became the New Andalusia province in 1537. In 1542, the Spanish established the Viceroyalty of Peru, which included both modern-day Colombia and Venezuela. For the rest of the century, Europeans brought more and more slaves from Africa to the area. In addition to agriculture, the Spanish made a bunch of money after mining a bunch of silver. By the 1600s, more and more Europeans were moving to South America, and simply put, the Spanish developed a racial hierarchy to justify their often horrible actions. Still, intermarriage between Europeans and indigenous peoples became increasingly common, and so that's why the hierarchy ridiculously looked like this. By the 1700s, Spain was starting to lose control over its South American colonies. In 1717, due to the area's isolation from its other South American colonies, Spain established the Viceroyalty of New Granada, which modern-day Colombia and Venezuela were both in. In 1739, Spain got into a war with Great Britain over Robert Jenkins' ear. It was called the War of... Jenkins' ear. And much of it took place in New Granada. Spain was able to defend it well, but for the rest of the century, there was increasing unrest within New Granada, as well as within the rest of the colonies, I should add. You had the Yu that were constantly in rebellion. In 1781, you had the revolt of the Comuneros in response to the Spanish raising taxes to fight the British. Two years later, one of the most significant 
figures in world history, Simon Bolivar was born in Caracas. He'd grow up to become an influential military and political leader who led independence movements across the entire freaking continent, including for both Colombia and Venezuela. But before that even happened, there was the Captaincy General of Venezuela, which Spain established in 1777 and kind of laid the groundwork for Venezuela before Bolivar was even born. And it was Francisco de Miranda, not Bolivar, who first led uprisings against Spain, declaring independence from Spain and establishing the First Republic of Venezuela on July 5th, 1811. For the next 12 years, rebels would fight in what became known as the Venezuelan War of Independence. Bolivar became the main leader due to that war, with many proclaiming him to be El Libertador, or the Liberator. Bolivar and the rebels finally won the war after their victory in the Battle of Lake Maracaibo. Bolivar would then go on to lead the Grenadian army, liberating several other countries from Spain across the continent. And so, as I mentioned earlier, Colombia and Venezuela used to be in the same country. After independence from Spain, both, along with modern-day Panama, most of modern-day Ecuador, and parts of modern-day Peru, Brazil, and Guyana, made up a country known as Gran Colombia. Named after Christopher Columbus, of course, Gran Colombia existed from the end of the Venezuelan War of Independence to 1831. However, Gran Colombia was splintered from the very get-go, basically, by different political and economic ideologies within, as well as geographic challenges. It was obvious Gran Colombia wasn't going to work out when Bolivar was nearly assassinated after declaring himself dictator of the country. Long story short, a dude named Jose Antonio Paez led a movement to separate Venezuela from Gran Colombia. It all went down relatively peacefully and the rest of Gran Colombia became Ecuador and you probably guessed it already, New Granada. You thought I was going to say Colombia, didn't you? Nah, it didn't become Colombia until 1886. Colombia established the first constitutional government in South America. Things were more chill in Colombia compared to Venezuela in the mid to late 1800s. Venezuela went through many different leaders and even had a civil war. In 1895, Venezuela had a territorial dispute with the United Kingdom. The United States stepped in to help resolve it. Hey, speaking of the United States, a kind of bully Colombia and aided Panamanian resistance, ultimately leading to Panama breaking off of Colombia to become its own country in 1903. It was all related to the Panama Canal that would soon be built. I made a video about all this if you want to learn more and stuff. Anyway, the United States would also secretly and not so secretly fight communism in Colombia during the Cold War later on. In the early 1900s, Venezuelans discovered oil in their own backyards. Lots of it, as it turns out. This ultimately made it the richest country in South America by the end of the century. Still, both countries throughout the century had quite a bit of political instability. In Colombia, guerrilla groups gained lots of power, especially in the rural areas of the country. By the 1970s, Colombian drug cartels led the country to being the number one exporter in the world of cocaine. Only in recent years has the Colombian government finally been able to weaken the power of drug lords in the country. In the 1980s, Venezuela and Colombia had a dispute over the Gulf of Venezuela and things got tense when a Colombian warship hung out in waters claimed by Venezuela. Under the leadership of Hugo Chavez, Venezuela went from being the richest country in South America to the poorest, mostly due to over-relying on oil sales and and accumulating a bunch of debt. This all ultimately led to a gigantic economic crisis that particularly got bad between 2010 and 2015. Their currency became worthless after hyperinflation and there were massive shortages of basic necessities, leading to most of the country starving. Much of this could have been avoided if the Venezuelan government had not been so corrupt. Meanwhile, Colombia has mostly been a success story in recent years with 
political stability and rising economic prosperity. Despite Venezuela's recent struggles, both countries today get along fairly well, except when it comes to football. Football, aka soccer, is huge in both countries, and the football rivalry between Colombia and Venezuela is the real deal, man. Both have among the highest capybara populations in the world. Capybaras, which are found only in South America, are the world's largest rodents and can weigh as much as 143 pounds. So how about differences between the two? Well, that's none of your darn business. Aww. I'm just kidding, I'll tell you. Colombia is bigger. I mean, by land area, it also has more people, nearly twice as much. Venezuela is more urbanized. Venezuela is divided up into 23 states, as well as the capital district and federal dependencies you know. Colombia is divided up into 32 departments. Colombia seems to be more influenced by Andean culture, whereas Venezuela seems to be more influenced by Caribbean culture. As I hinted at earlier, Colombia has one of the fastest growing economies in the world. Venezuela? Well, for a while there, it was one of the fastest shrinking economies in the world. Colombia has a much higher GDP per capita and median household income. Inflation continues to be a huge problem in Venezuela, and more than 90% of Venezuelans are currently living in poverty. And despite the economy currently being way better in Colombia, it still has a much lower cost of living. It's no surprise that since 2014, nearly 2 million Venezuelans have moved to Colombia. The Simón Bolívar International Bridge, which crosses the Taquira River and connects the Venezuelan city of San Antonio del Taquira and the Colombian town of La Parada, has come to symbolize this migration. This flood of Venezuelan migrants to Colombia has led to increased tensions between the two countries. And unfortunately, it has also led to a lot of Colombians being hostile to Venezuela. Still, Colombians should be used to Venezuelans, okay? 87% of all foreign-born folks in Colombia are from Venezuela. The life expectancy is apparently quite a bit higher in Colombia. Major industries in Colombia include construction, manufacturing, and mining. Venezuela's economy is still mainly, um, yeah, just oil. In fact, Venezuela still has the world's largest oil reserves. That's probably why it's cheaper to fill up your car with gasoline there compared to all other countries in the world other than Libya and Iran. That all said, it's only the 25th biggest producer of oil in the world. Other major industries in Venezuela include food processing and also mining. Related to Venezuela's poor economy is the fact that it also has a higher violent crime rate. Residents of Colombia are less religious. Despite Venezuela having universal health care in Colombia not having it, health care access is generally better and easier to get in Colombia currently. Tejo is this distinctive sport that's popular in Colombia. To play, you throw a metal disc called a tejo across a field at a square meter sized angled board covered with clay. The clay is hidden with paper triangles filled with gunpowder inside of them to explode when the tejo hits them. That's three points, by the way. Venezuela is known for having really good baseball players. Colombia is known for having really good roller skaters, believe it or not. Colombia's national team has won the World's Roller Speed Skating Championship nine times over the past 12 years. Side note, I spent way too much time recently just watching Colombian rollerbladers and skaters skate down highways. Venezuela has the world's tallest waterfall. The dramatic epic Angel Falls, which has a plunge of 807 meters. If you want to see Angel Falls in person, it's a bit of a journey as it's located in an isolated jungle. So, uh... Good luck with that. Not to get all cheesy, but Colombia is one of the few places in the world where many put cheese in their coffee. You heard that correctly. Cheese in their coffee. They also drink oatmeal. 
What the heck? The national dish of Venezuela is pabellón criollo, which features ground beef, beans, rice, and plantains. The national dish of Colombia is bandeja pesa, which often features red beans cooked with pork, white rice, ground beef, pork belly, fried rice, plantains, black pudding, avocado, lemon, chorizo, arepas, and different sauces. Dang, that's a lot. Colombians don't mess around. Venezuela has some of the most dangerous roads in the world. According to the World Health Organization, it's the seventh most dangerous country in the world to drive in. Jeez. Speaking of roads, no road connects Colombia to its neighbor to the north, Panama. This part of the world is called the Darien Gap because that's where the so-called Pan American Highway, a 30,000 kilometer network of roads stretching from Dead Horse, Alaska to to Ushuaia, Argentina has a gap. Despite the Darien Gap being a dangerous area filled with smugglers, criminals, other wild animals, flash flooding, and no cell phone service, hundreds of thousands of people cross it by foot every single year. Speaking of criminals, Pablo Escobar, the wealthiest criminal in history who had an estimated $70 billion net worth in today's money at the time of his death, was from Colombia. Venezuela is home to the most electric place on the planet. Yep, lightning strikes where the Catatumbo River meets Lake Maracaibo, which is technically a lagoon, more than any other spot on Earth. It gets thousands of lightning strikes every hour during peak times, and the location gets an average of 260 days of thunderstorms every year. Locals even call it the, quote, everlasting storm. That all is just so shocking to me. <laughs> Colombia has generally faster internet speeds. Venezuela has the world's second highest proportion of protected land, with only the small island country of Seychelles having more. Around 57% of Venezuelan land is protected. Just 17% of Colombian land is protected, and Colombia has way more deforestation. Cumbia, arguably the most distinctive musical and dance style in all of Latin Latin America began in Colombia, although it's quite big in Venezuela as well. Shakira, the queen of Latin music herself, is from Colombia. Danny Ocean is from Venezuela. Meh, you probably haven't even heard of him if you're from North America, but I personally think his music is way better than Shakira. Plus, he isn't facing accusations of tax evasion. Oh, well, I'm so sorry, queen. I think I should end the video now that I've probably offended Shocky fans everywhere. In conclusion, Colombia and Venezuela are two of the most beautiful countries in the world. Natural beauty, but beautiful people as well. And while Venezuela has been struggling for the past 10 years, don't forget that 20 years ago it was the richest country in South America. And its economy is slowly improving. Keep your eyes on both these countries. I predict they'll both have a huge influence in the world for years to come. Is bueno volver a Sudamérica? ¿Eres de Colombia o Venezuela? Si es así, quiero saber de usted. Also, which two countries should I compare next for this series? Let me know down below. And now it's time for my monthly shout out to all my Patreon supporters who donate at least $15 a month or more to my channel. They are so generous and awesome. Starting with my biggest donors, thank you to Bill Dowd, Alicia Solberg, Andrew B., Anthony Beckett, Austin Ciros, Christian Fountain, Corey Ryman, Derek Williams, Dr. Paul J. Lilly, Elaine Warwick, Empty Machine, Fletch Fick, Isabel, Isaiah Warfield, Javier Gloria, Jeremy Dunham, Joe Cook, Michael Cortez, Neo R14, Nick Everett, Osbers Gaming, Defender of Communism, Pat Iapica, Patrick Stewart, Psycho, Robert Candell, Salty, Sammy, Samuel Striz, Saul Goodman 1917, Sean Connett, Society's Basement, Adam Christians, Alex Villasenor, Andrew Snyder, Frankie O'Connor, Grant Hughes, Ian Driscoll, Jack L, Jacob Birnbaum, Joel Serrano Lozada, Justin Love, Jules Gingras, KZ210QB, Oliver E, Naderade, Raquel Jones, Stacy, Steve Bryan, Steve Eisen, Thomas Oppenheim, Warren Girog, Waterfort, and Zachary F. Parker. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters, and thank you for watching.